Hey, good morning. Welcome to Morning Momentum, Episode 4. Today we're going to be talking about risk-taking. Can't wait to share with you. Grab you some coffee. Let's get started this morning. Good morning, Pastor Sergeant here. It's episode four of Morning Momentum. We're going to talk about, are you a risk taker today? When the late Nadine Stair of Louisville, Kentucky was 85 years old, she was asked what she would do if she had to live her life over again. I'd make more mistakes next time, she said. I'd relax. I would limber up. I would be sillier than I've been this trip around. I would take fewer things seriously. I would take more chances. I would climb more mountains and swim more rivers. She said I would eat more ice cream and less beans. I would perhaps have more actual trouble, but I would definitely have fewer imaginary ones. You see, I, I'm one of those people, she said, who live sensibly and, sens and, and sanely hour after hour, day after day. Oh, she said, I've had my moments, and if I had to do it over again, I'd have more of them. In fact, I try to have nothing else, just moments, one after another, instead of living so many years ahead of each day. I've been one of those persons who never go anywhere without a thermometer, a hot water bottle, and a raincoat. She said, if I had to do it over again, I would travel lighter than I have before. If I had my life to live over again, I would start barefoot earlier in the spring and stay that way later into the fall. I would go to more dances. I would ride more merry-go-rounds. I would pick more daisies. Nadine addresses a way of life that I think that we all struggle with at some point. There are two equal and opposite forces that act on us all the time. One pull says, take the safe, easy, comfortable way, go after security. There's another voice, however, that simply says, take more risks. The choice we make determines who we are and where we end up when it's all said and done. So I ask you a question today. Are you a risk taker? Or do you just play it safe? Playwright Neil Simon said, If no one ever took risks, Michelangelo would have painted the Sistine floor. Risk is a dynamic that is necessary to starting anything power, powerful or great for God. In our lives, in our family, in the life of our church, in the life of who we are as individuals. Hudson Taylor, the great man of faith who founded the China Inland Mission, integrated faith and risk. He said this, unless there is an element of risk in our exploits for God, there's no need for faith. For us to fully understand what I'm talking about, and in the beginning of this year, we all, I think, have a desire to grow in God, we've got to understand this component called risk. Gideon is a great example of someone who chose to step into the realm of risk to see God do something great within his time and in his nation. The story of Gideon begins in chapter 6 of the book of Judges. Here we find the nation of Israel, typical fashion, turning away from God, doing their own thing, worshiping other idols. And because of their lack of faithfulness, you know what God does? God hands them over to, to the enemy, to marauders who would come in every year at harvest time and take their crops by force. This happened for several years before the people called out to God, God, you got to help us, you got to save us. Enter this man by the name of Gideon. We first find this hero kind of playing it safe. To keep the looters from taking his family's food, Gideon threshes his wheat behind a wine press. Normally, you thresh wheat on level ground so the wind could blow away the chaff as you would toss it into the air. But Gideon went about the work in a pit behind a wine press so no one would see him. It's here that God calls Gideon while he is cowering. He calls him and says, the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. God sees apparently something that neither Gideon nor the reader of the story can see, that this fearful man was about to take huge risks for God. He was going to step out of his comfort zone, and what he feared he had at one point couldn't overcome the faith that he suddenly saw forming in his life. Risk will do that to you. It will replace your fear with the faith that says, with God, all things are possible. The first thing God calls Gideon to do is to clean up his own backyard. 
You see, the people of his own village and even his father practiced worship to Baal. God was eventually going to deliver his people from the invading tribes, but first the hometown sin needed to be dealt with. You see, we can't be useful to God publicly unless we're faithful to God privately. So Gideon's first call to take was the risk of cleaning up his own house. He had to deal with what was at home. Today, I want you to spend some time reading Judges 6, verse 25 through 32. Read the story. Gideon's people had not necessarily abandoned God. They'd simply added in some other gods for safe measure. Of course, we know that this is a violation of the first and second commandment that was given to them, but Gideon had to confront an accepted and expected cultural norm. Here's the first instance of a man that knows how to take risk. He was willing to hit the problem head on. I believe God calls each and every one of us to that same level of faithfulness, practices and attitudes that can creep into our lives, even into the church that are not biblical, that we've got to deal with. As God began to work in Gideon to fulfill his purposes, he had to confront what was wrong right there at home and begin to deal with it. I say it often, but it's true. I can only, con correct, I can only correct what I'm willing to confront. So today I ask you, what are the areas of your life that maybe you've played it safe? That maybe you're not stepping out and doing what God is asking of you to do. Gideon took a risk. And God rewarded him for it and brought about, brought about a great victory. 2019 is filled with opportunities if we'll step out and do what God is asking us to do. I'm excited about the days ahead. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about thankfulness. Look forward to spending some time with you again. If you're liking this, please comment, share, hit the like, bu like button. Like button. There we got it. On our YouTube page. And uh, let's make this something that helps other people.